way didn't seem to work. Last week, Titanfall didn't just get a new map pack, but also saw its fifth big update to add new features and tweaks to the game. It's been a good few months since I last played Titanfall, so I hopped back in on PC to see how it's come along since launch. Update 5 adds things like the daily challenges in the black market, which I'll leave to the text to describe exactly how they work, but I do like the effect that they've had on the game. The black market's not really for me, seeing as I always forget to use the burn cards anyway, so buying packs of extra cards using the in-game currency, it's, it's completely pointless for me to be honest. But you can also save up to buy certain Titan insignias, which go alongside the ones which you can earn for completing challenges. Now daily challenges are a twist on those challenges because they're much smaller in scale, but they also have a more tangible effect on how people were playing. Over the weekend everyone was running around with arc proximity mines and using the faster, more nimble Strider Titan chassis just because those were featured in the daily challenges. So it's a neat way that Respawn is able to push people to experiment with their loadouts again and try new things. Now of course, these come alongside things like the extra Titan voices, labelling your custom loadouts, and these are changes that are great for active players, but not really big enough to get people to come back to the game if they've left it behind. That's the job of the DLC packs, and Frontier's Edge is no different in this regard. It's got three maps included, Dig Site, Export and Haven. They're all really quite different too. Export is like this densely packed town running down the slide of a slope, with lots of small one or two room buildings and a ton of doorways and windows for pilots to quickly duck through. It gives them a bit of an advantage over titans, in who are basically funneled down these very tight streets um, to fight their battle. But it's dominated by this big central bridge and ejecting pilots have a good chance of actually getting themselves up onto the underslung pipes and do a little bit of sniping. What's clever is that there's basically no cover up there. So you'll not only get shot at, but one of the buildings underneath allows you to send a massive electrical current through it, which will, well, it'll just fry anything that's stood up there. So basically, if you're going to snipe them up there, you've got to get moving pretty quickly. Dig site is a pretty big contrast visually, with a much darker industrial complex. A lot of fighting tends to happen around this map centerpiece, which is this huge rock saw which uh, goes over a large open area in which titans will often get their fighting done. And that rock saw gives pilots a bit of elevation from which they can fire down onto the titans below. The rest of the map then has a lot more buildings for pilots to hide in and close quarters fighting. So this is this is quite an interesting bit of asymmetrical design, I think. Haven is a strange one. I mean, I love the theme and the setting. It's this idyllic and expensive holiday resort. Um, and I also really like the way that pilots, who, especially if they've just ejected from their Titan, are able to run around and wall run along the tops of the central skyscrapers. But when you're on the ground, I think that the scenery just feels a bit off. It's, it kind of feels like I'm a hobbit in a Lord of the Rings film, and I'm just surrounded by lots of items which have been made specifically one and a half times bigger so that I look small. The buses on the road, for example, and some of the size and scale of the building interiors. I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just imagining things, but Haven's scale, it just feels a bit odd to me. But that one little thing doesn't really stop this being a pretty cool map pack. There's three new takes on the gameplay here, and that should help to refresh the game for existing players and people coming back in who just want to check out the map pack. My only worry is that the DLC packs are actually separate on the list from the main game. I mean, there's no combined and server-managed matchmaking to get DLC players together alongside the original maps. It's just these three maps in a loop. And while I don't have Expedition to see how the player count is doing there, um, I do worry that in a month or two Frontier's Edge will have lost a lot of the players and it could be a little bit dead. So while I do think that this pack will bring players back in to see some of the changes that Respawn have made to the game as a whole, um, 
I do think that Frontier's Edge is probably going to fade into obscurity over the next month or two. But by then, we'll be looking forward to the next and final map pack in the season pass, and then we'll have the inevitable shift of focus to a sequel. Now, I hope you've enjoyed our quick look at Titanfall and uh, the Frontier's Edge DLC and how it's progressed as a game since launch, um, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Unstoppable.